Well, there was some confusion over COVID protocols. Do you all are okay about the, the hand situation? Well, uh, here's what I think. There's a, there's a ton of disinformation out there. Yeah. has been in the last probably uh, for a while, but it seems accelerated in this country. So this is not 2020. It's 2021. And so they have enhanced protocols, and they're, they're very different than what we uh, lived through last year. So that, that, to answer your question, you can be an enhanced, but it's not the enhanced protocols from last year. Things evolve, and December 2021 is a lot different than December 2020. So you just got the three guys that went on the list on Monday. So You're gonna, so as soon as we have something, they get put on the list, mm -hmm. just like it does around the league. All right, on to football here. Hey, the offensive line, uh, can you talk about the work they've done over the, the last stretch here and uh, what Coach Ledford's been able to, to, to get out of that group? Well, it's just a culmination of, of trying to improve and doing your job better week after week, and I think that's what you're seeing. I wish I had a, uh, you know some, some great quote for you. Uh, there's nothing real flashy about it. We continue to get back to work and try to get better, and it's starting to pay off. But we got a huge challenge this week going out to San Francisco. And, uh, you know, what has it uh, been like having a guy like Grady, you know, that, you know, that's played at a high level and that, to see him continue to do his work while the other guys are coming along? Well, that's what uh, that's why he's a. I have so much respect for Grady. He's a he's a true pro. He comes to work every day. Tries, he's got the right mindset. He's a real leader. He's not some fake guy that had status. Um, but you throw it to this guy's real, and uh, I got a ton of respect for Grady Jarrett. Thank you, Coach. Michael. Yeah, I know we talked about Russell a little bit the last couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. his emergence and or his um, emerge production. How has that helped what you're trying to do scheme wise and what you're trying to call offense? Well, we get contributions from everybody. So, uh, obviously, Russ, is, uh, the ball has found him the last couple of weeks. He's certainly healthier than he was earlier this year. And I think like a lot of our guys, they continue to, as we continue to improve as an offense, uh, you know, you're going through year one, you're going through a lot of trans transition. Uh, he's, you know, people are playing us in a ton of zone, and uh, he, he's getting, getting open, finding the right spots, doing his job, and the ball's going his way. Is your offense designed in some ways where – Having a massively productive receiver is not necessarily as important as another offense. You just try to find productive football players. We'll, we'll evolve and play to the strengths of our team, uh, depending on how, you know, the injury situations, you know, just practical reality, who we have up, um, and who can help us move the football and score points. And as far as injuries go, where do things stand with Eric, with Dante? With yeah, Eric, uh, so we got the MRI in there. Um, he's got a, you know, a tendon issue that uh, he'll go on IR at some point. What was the next one? Uh, Dante. Dante, day to day. Uh, uh, Cordero, and with Cordero, is how much of this at this point with handling him is having managed his reps? We, we do it with all. There's a lot of thought put in. Um, we do it with all our vets, and we do what's best for them and what's best for the team. That's where the decision's made with them. Uh, it's a collaborative effort. And so, everybody's at different points in their career, different points of the season, and I don't think anybody, you know, it's the. December in the NFL, and so you're gonna to have to manage it, and you gotta do what's best you think for the players and for your team. Josh, anybody else? Oh, and Darren Bates will be back at practice day. Yeah. As the the cycle between offenses and defenses, as that wheel turns, or mm -hmm. do you feel like we're, the NFL is on the start of a circle back to the run game? I I think I think you're. I, I don't. I it's definitely a circle back to it. I, I, you know. I think you look at some of the things. I, I said this when we played New England a couple weeks ago, whenever it was. I don't think they've ever been given enough credit how physical they are on both sides of the line of scrimmage. They've always been able to manage to run it. I know some years have been different depending on how their team's been. Um, but the physicality year over year, teams that usually play this late in the year, not all of them. There's always different outliers. I get it. But you say year over year, the teams that can handle the line of scrimmages, whether that's part of the run game or they're very physical on the other side of the line of scrimmage, you're using the ones playing in January. Well, there's a challenge every week. We got different schemes you put in. Uh, he's a terrific player. Guy they use, uh, they've started using him a lot similar to the last couple of weeks, like Patterson. They're not the same player, but he's in the backfield more. They did run the ball with him early, more on gadgets. Now they kind of, he's taken a little bit more of a CP role. Um, they run a little bit inside the tackles. He's a, he's a really good football player. They put the ball in his hands, he usually makes things happen. So he's a good player. He can be a problem and uh, somebody you got to account for. I 
think it's the same as he's a good player, uh, just like just like Foyer, Dion, all these guys. Uh, they're they're a unit. They play as a unit. Um, AJ, the guys continue to prove. He does his job. Does it well. Uh, we play multiple schemes out there, and he's got a pretty good understanding. He works really hard at it. And I got to ask you in training camp if you could see AJ kind of being a leader among this defense. And I was just kind of curious. Now at the final part of this season, do you think he's evolved into that? And how do you see him doing that? What kind of leader are you asking about? Like just kind of like a vocal leader. Well, I think everybody's got to be themselves. Same with the coaches. I've never tried it. I've learned a lot from a lot of great coaches that I've been around. But at the end of the day, you got to be yourself. So I know that, you know, in the movies and there's a lot of conventional wisdom that, you, you know, you may have to be this rah rock guy to be a leader. Um, I think guys respond to guys that, that play at a high level to do their job and then they're themselves. They're not trying to be something that's not. So, uh, you know, as AJ's continued to evolve as a player, he's in his second year, uh, very confident player, but he's his own guy. And, I, and I have, that's why I have a ton of respect for him. Charles? Coach, you guys are 6-2 uh, and one score game. Uh, this year. Um, I'm just curious, I know there's a lot that goes into being able to pull those games out. Um, how do you feel like you've all been able to be successful um, in those moments when, when the games are tight like this? Because you understand that's the reality of most weeks in the NFL, and you deal with the reality. you got to understand that it, uh, it's a privilege to have that kind of pressure. Uh, it's what you sign up for. And, uh, you know, our guys do a good job of continuing to grind it out. And uh, there's, you know, as you work at it, as you as you get results, I think that confidence builds. And as a play caller, uh, you guys have had a lot of success in the run game. Like, what does that open up for you as a play caller when you have success in the run game? Well, it allows you to to try to as best you can to keep the defense off balance. It's as simple as that. Mel, Eli, yeah, coach. What um, you know, it's real hard writing my first and last story, so I'm just gonna. Say. What's, what's hard? What's hard about it? Huh? What's hard about it? Because I mean, they don't do no skills. You know, you gotta really have an eye for the trenches to, to know, uh, you know, what they're doing. If they're getting a yeah. push or they're sealing a the guy, the combo block. I mean, it's a lot going on up there. Yeah. And, and so you know, to be able to try to explain that to people uh, is you know kind of find that one of the, the, the difficult jewels. Uh, yeah, well, there's a, there's a lot of nuance. That's what I love about this game. And uh, you love that people are passionate about it and care. It's such a different sport because there's so many different variables that can happen in one play. Um, so, uh, you know, there's 22 guys out there. And it's a great challenge, this league. That's what makes this league fun. Uh, a lot of really good players out there, and, and, and people study really hard at it. And, and, and there's a chess match, and then there's obviously the physical games and the one-on-one -on -one matchups, and then you get into those combination blocks. and um, you know, I, some people, you know, arrogantly think that they can see it all in one play. Um, again, there's just so many little nuances, so it takes a long time to study over and over and over again. I think at the, the primitive thing, if you, you can just block your guy in front of you, you're probably doing a decent job at offensive line. When you can see that line of scrimmage move, mm -hmm. usually good things are happening. And then without getting into the details of, right. of all the techniques and the, and the combination blocks or the, you know, schemes and one-on-one. Is it how much of it is for the lay person, both power versus uh, angles and techniques? Depends on the scheme and then what's happening. I mean, sometimes, you know, if they're running a pressure, you may catch them in it and the guy kind of takes himself out of a play. Um, in other ones, you just see it, especially in some of the short yardage, depending on if you're using gap schemes coming downhill at somebody, it's, it could be one on one. It's like an old school drill, you know, and see if you can move that man against his will, uh, depending on that scheme. And then, you know, if you get them out of a, out of a gap in some kind of combination of different schemes. Um, but I think if you can see movement and space open up in the run game, mm -hmm. usually you're doing a pretty decent job. You mentioned, you know, the nuance. How often, for you, you watch a ton of football. Mm -hmm. How many times do you need to watch a play on pay-per-view for you to, to grasp everything? I don't have a fixed number. And so it just, it just depends. Depends what's going on. I mean, so I don't have a fixed number for you. Sorry. I wasn't sure if it was like, yeah, you know, I know I have to watch it at least three times in order to make sure I caught everything. Or Maybe it depends on how much sleep I got the night before. <laughs> how much coffee I've drank. Yeah, I mean, a lot of variables there too, Mike. <laughs> and then that. Just to clarify, I don't know if you said yes or no to the vote question. Are you guys in contention with Walls right now? We're in the 2021. I think it's you know, like a lot of things that get leaked out from God knows where, um, not from here. But again, what I'm trying to educate is not last year's. 2020. Everybody like I think that's 
there's a societal issue that we're still in a pandemic, but there's a lot of variables that have changed. Every country's handled differently, globally, locally. Um, so that's the thing is, thankfully, you know, if they're saying that there's things you can control and things you can't, and it's true with everything in life. Um, so uh, thankfully, depending on how you believe, doesn't mean I think I'm better or worse than anybody else, but vaccine's available. Thankful to go get it. Thankful to get my booster shot. Uh, but there's a lot of things I can't control. It's out there. It's inevitable. You try to, you know, educate, you try to do smart things, but this is a very different moment in time than it was in 2020. The pandemic's still going on, but we're not completely different things. So last year when you're enhanced, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a vaccine available. There was different protocols you had to go into where things became more virtual, and there was, there was so much more unknown. There's still a lot of unknown. I don't claim to be an expert. Uh, I never will on, on medical issues. Uh, so I think that's what needs to be addressed is that it's enhanced. It's a very different moment in time, and every team's dealing with something different. Our issue's completely, completely different from the next team. So we feel like we're in a good spot, but there's always unknown when you walk in this building every day. Sure, I think I think there was a lot of miss. Um, it wasn't factual what was really going on. And again, I don't know any other building. I just know we communicate with the league constantly. I just know what's going on up here in Flowery Branch, and we're trying to do the best we can. And uh, with, with something that's really, if you really look at it, it's uncontrollable in certain areas. So you, no, you would assume wrong. I'm not going to get into the, the, the league protocols. I'm sure, you know, somebody can get their hands on it. They can leak it from somewhere, but it's not going to come from here. Uh, we still, I still value privacy. It's not some big mystery, but no, we're not in virtual meetings. That's not, that's not a right assumption. Did you, sorry. Yeah. Oh, you just slipped it in there. So you, you got your booster then? Yeah, I got no problem telling anybody. Okay. That doesn't mean I think I'm, it doesn't mean I think I'm like, I'm not like self-righteous about it. I think I'm better than anybody else. I, there, there's a, available things as best you can. I know nothing's 100%. You try to control the best you can, and then you got to assume your own risk, what you're comfortable with. So that's how I look at it. I just want to make sure I have the rest of them. Sure. There's nothing – I'm not afraid to – I mean, like, I don't think it's taboo. Like, yeah, I got vaccinated. Whoa, big story. They're going to make everybody get their booster if you're Tier 1 and Tier 2 anyways. Well, there's a lot of things, Anthony, and so it's a lot like life. Like the flu's still going around, guys. People are still getting sick with the flu. I mean, it's that time of year. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things out of your control. It's a holiday season. Um, different stresses in life people have. Uh, you know, there's all kind of things. I, I try to. You try to. We're all human. Yeah, you may get frustrated things. And, and try to control what you can control. That's all I try to do. And so it's the same thing. You come to work every day, no matter if it's. COVID, it's the flu, there's, there's things going on outside of, everybody's got something in their life that's going on, and you try to come to work and hopefully it gives you a chance to, to lock in and focus on something that maybe it's a good distraction from real life, because real life out there has been tough for a lot of people for a couple of years, and everybody and nobody's uh, immune to that here either. Mike Davis told us what you told him in the running backs and what's had the running game going. What has the conversation been like over the last couple of weeks with you guys being able to do on the road? I'm not sure what what do Mike say. Um, not to get you in trouble, but uh, not to get me in trouble. He, he just to say you challenged him. You challenged him to I just better. just try to try to coach better. Josh, did you ever attempt or consider long snapping as a way to continue your career? Uh, you know what? Probably the dumber thing I did is I didn't listen to somebody that told me that at 14, 15 years old. I always looked up when, when I got to work in Washington, another Tar Heel, Ethan Albright, kind of had it figured out. Um, he, was a, he was a great uh, college offensive lineman. I, I can't think of maybe Ethan played 17 years being a long snapper. He's just signed a one-year deal. I'm sure he's living a good life somewhere in North Carolina. Maybe he's in Greensboro. But, uh, yeah, that was probably one of the bigger mistakes. That's a good job, and that's a job you don't ever want to be noticed. And, you know, Josh Harris is an excellent long snapper. Uh, yeah, I probably, if I had listened at 14, like a lot of things, who knows? The do you think people understand the intricacies of that? No. No. That's a, that's a, uh, it's a, it's a great, great living, but there's, there's a, again, you got to be a quiet professional, um, and that's what Josh is. You hope to never be noticed, I guess. Hey, Coach, what is the, when is the decision for you to, what, uh, I call them West Coast Lows, like the, the sun, the shades, and then what, when was it that you do with those? <laughs> 
Sun was right in my eyes. Again, I know. Um, and they weren't. They were, uh, <laughs> they were sunglasses I wear when I go snow skiing. So, I, I, again, I wasn't trying to look sweet or awesome. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm setting any kind of styles around here. Um, so, I, it really is just practical. The sun's right in your eyes. I put the sunglasses on. If it wasn't in my eyes, I wouldn't have worn them. It's like when Michael asked me with my hat selection. There's no deeper meaning. When I get up early in the morning, I get my coffee. I've got about three hats laying around. I pick one up. It says Falcons on. I put it on. Uh, yeah, I've got tons of hats. I got too many hats. My, she, my wife tries to throw them all away, like half the, half a year, every you know six months or so. <laughs> We, we, all right, I'm just going to dive down this one. Sure. I got to open up the door for the deeper meaning. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, were you, no like, when you were, like, were you, when you were a kid, were you, like, like, I was a hat guy as a kid. I had, like, yeah. 50 of them, you know, like, were yeah. you, like, that your thing? Yeah. Like, were you like, yes. Yeah, it was. How many do you have? Like, I, I've all, never counted. Were, like, they all on a wall? We, we, we've been able to move a couple times, so a couple of them, I, I guess, conveniently get lost in the moves. We should probably give them the goodwill. Goodwill, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Coach. I can't help but notice, but can we expect to see him more blue jeans? <laughs> I just haven't changed into my work clothes for the day. How about that? I wear jeans a lot. Like, I don't just show up and uh, maybe I'll show up in the old bike coaching shorts. A little throwback for you. So, I just, I don't put a lot of, I mean, again, it's a little cold this morning. Check the weather when I get up, put on. I just haven't changed into my uh, work gear yet, Anthony. So, yeah, that's fine. That's part of the job description. Okay. Uh, you, you, you talked last week about how important Carolina was. Like, does this week, as far as game within the construct of the Sure, it's a big season, game. Does this week kind of even, is even bigger in some ways? Of course. Yeah. You know, I mean, you go the old cliche, it's a big game, it's the next game, but the reality is, I mean, it's a, it's a late December game with a lot on the line for both teams. It's an important NFC game for both teams. And um, it's where you want to be. You want to be in meaningful games. I've said it 100 times. I'll say it again. You continue to win, and you give yourself a chance. It's a it's a big game for both teams. Is it? In a way, do you feel like with the way that the NFC is in the middle, does it almost feel like an elimination game? Or something? No, so, so because I mean, you you obviously you know you're gonna throw both teams gonna throw everything they got at it, and it's a really good team we're facing. Well coached, smart, it's a fast, really skilled team, um, and so. There's so many things that can happen. I and mean, we've all, you guys have covered this league. You know the, the craziness that happens in late in the year. Uh, you know, it used to be week 16, 17 crazy. Now you're going to say week 17, 18, there are going to be all kind of bizarre things that happen. And yeah, but you all have stories, and we've all been around it. So until they officially eliminate you, uh, you're never really out of it because there's some things that have just gone really crazy in the last couple of weeks of the season. How would you describe what's the day's progression of being able to bounce back from injury and be so vital? I think that's a, it's a credit to him. I mean, he's, he stayed with it. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can get as frustrated with if you're dealing with an early season injury. Uh, so I, I think a lot, Russ deserves a lot of credit. Uh, love working with Russ. He's been a, a good uh, third down target for the last couple of years. And there, there are a lot of guys like him who have, have a, a reputation of being good on that down. Like, what's important to being a good? Well, it depends on your situation. It depends what you're being asked to do. If you're going to be asked to be the slot and, and you're the maybe third or fourth option, uh, which some guys, that they they dominate inside because maybe the attention goes elsewhere because of the different personnel out there or whoever else on our team. You know, you're a complimentary slot as a role guy that has a you know huge job on third down and you may get the, the best uh, matchup because of the advantage of who's on the field. And then sometimes people's roles grow. And then if you become a number one option, you can win. It's completely different set of circumstances. Uh, so Russ has done a really good job on really every down. He does a lot of little things that people never see. He blocks well, the point of attack. Um, really pleased uh, and, and really enjoy working with Russell. I wouldn't compare him to anybody. There's nobody quite like Russell. Anybody else? Appreciate you guys. Thank you.